us taking a look out. Like our political system is just, that's stressful. All you got to do is spend a few minutes listening to that, and you're, you know, it'll drive you crazy, right? There's, there's a lot of stresses to those things, the balance of things that are out there. This financial system that we have is, is just in, in a terrible condition, what we're dealing with with inflation and, and gas prices and food prices and all of this stuff going on. If, if our focus is, is that way, Amen. If that's what we're focusing on, then, then our outlook begins to change somewhat. Now, if we have our focus in the right place, then our outlook changes as well. And that's what I want us to, I want us as a church, uh, you know, this isn't just something. You know, sometimes you, know, you preach stuff. I just, I want you to know this isn't just something. Like, I didn't just show up on Sunday morning like, well, I got to say something, you know. They're expecting something, so I better just bring something. I didn't just come bringing something this morning, amen? I mean, I listened to the Lord, and God said, this is what they need this morning. I was sitting there scratching my head going, I don't know what in the world. I was sitting there yesterday, literally. Sometimes I know weeks in advance what I'm going to preach. Yesterday morning, I was sitting there scratching my head like, Lord, I have no idea. Nothing. I don't have any inspiration this morning. And then, I, I mean, within two minutes, I had so much inspiration, I couldn't even top fast enough. God's like, I got you covered, right? So I didn't just come bringing something. I want you to listen this morning because God is aware of all of us. He's aware of our thinking. He's aware of, of how we feel, the way that we're looking at life. He's aware of all of those things. And so when this message began to roll in yesterday, I realized God, what a, there's, there's a need right here. Obviously, there's a need of some sort where we're, as a people, maybe our focus isn't where it ought to be, or maybe we're less focused than what we should be, or maybe we're more focused on some things that we ought not be. We're worrying about things that we ought not worry about. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're drugged down by things God didn't intend us to be drugged down by. So whatever it is today, God wants us all to take a pause and take a look at our lives in comparison to what it is that He is saying. Amen. So if we're not where, where He is speaking of us to be, then we have to take a good look in our spiritual mirror and allow God to help us make the adjustments we need to make. Are you with me on that this morning? Amen. Which that's what I come into church for. That's what I hunger for. When I sit down, I hear a message. I'm looking for that. I want. I want to be challenged. Like draw me to a a, a closer place. I want a closer walk with God. And I hope you come with that hunger this morning. I hope. I hope your desire isn't just to stay the same that you were yesterday. I come to church. I hope preacher just make me feel good for a few minutes, and then then I'll go about my way. I, I hope you want to be challenged. I hope that's your desire. Listen, growth. It's only going to come if you challenge yourself. Amen. Or you allow yourself to be challenged. That's where growth comes. So we want to grow. I mean, I want us to grow numerically as a church. I'm interested in seeing that. The more that we can preach to, the, more, the happier that makes me. But my greatest desire is to see the people of God grow. I want you to grow individually. I want you to be stronger in your relationship with Christ. Because the stronger that each one of us are individually, the greater that we're going to be in the kingdom of God as far as being able to do a work in this world that we're living in. Now, if you ever watch a lion tamer, you ever seen those guys, uh, guys jump in a cage with a, with a lion? It just, just, you know, you just question people's sanity sometimes, right? But if you see those lion tamers, a lot of times they have this little stool. You see them with this stool. And, and, and I, I didn't know that there was any purpose to the stool outside of I just don't want to get bit. Bite the stool, not me. I thought that's what that was all about. But there's a reason they actually bring that stool. They point the four legs. If you watch, they don't point the base at the line. They point the four legs toward the line because lines usually can only focus on one thing at a time. And they'll point that stool toward the line with the four legs pointed out, and it draws the focus of the line, and they don't know exactly what to focus on. So they get a little confused by this simple little stool. Amen. We're like that. We're like that oftentimes. We get things waved in front of us and we're you know, squirrel, you know. We, we lose our attention. We're, we're off in another direction. We're not focused on, on what God is saying. God says, listen, focus on Christ. Focus on your Messiah. Focus on your high priest. Focus on this. And he's got a reason for saying that because he knows how we are. 
He knows what we deal with. He knows the trials in this world. He knows the enemy that we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis that is always trying to bring out the stool to try to draw away our attention, to try to draw our focus away. And we have got to be, uh, we've got to be uh, wise enough and, and spiritually sensitive enough that we can recognize uh, these things that go on uh, in the world and, and not allow ourselves to be drawn away in those things. Amen. Everybody pause and think about that for a second because we can all think about five things that happened to us last week that tried to draw us away in some kind of way. You ever heard somebody say, I almost had to step outside my sanctification, right? Because something was trying to draw you away. There's something that, you know, something that make you angry and it tries to draw you away into your old behavior. Something bothers you and tries to draw you away or something is tempting and it's trying to draw you away. There's all of these things in life that are trying to draw us away. We're not just talking about sinful things. So sometimes we get paralyzed in our work as a child of God. And I say paralyzed, we become stagnant or we become lukewarm. And it's not because we have a bad heart. It's not because we don't have a desire to be, uh, to be prospering in the kingdom of God. It's not that we ha- don't have a desire to see the kingdom of God prosper. It's not that. It's just that we lose focus. And we're not even thinking about the fact that we've lost focus, but we're also not, not setting out to have focus. And so we have to be purposeful. And that's one of the things we want to talk about today is being purposeful in our focus. Meaning you can choose to set your eyes on Christ. You choose to set your affection on things above. And it's a purposeful choice. It's not going to happen by accident. Meaning when you get up in the morning, if you, if, if you, this is what God's telling us to do. He says, well, I want you to focus. He says, set your affection. So, so we know what God says, and, 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 and we're going to talk about some of why he says that, but we, we know what he says, and so we have to make a purposeful choice that we're going to do just what he said. I want to focus on him. Well, you know, Paul said, I die daily. Well, part of what he knew, part of his need to be able to, his ability to be able to focus was he was going to have to put that flesh under subjection, because the flesh was going to keep him out of focus. Amen. Amen. We all understand that. Every last one of us, we're in this flesh, and you know that your flesh tries to draw you away. And if you begin to tend to the desires of the flesh, it won't be long that you're completely out of focus when it comes to the things of the kingdom of God. Amen. Are you with me? So we all understand that. We get that. And so the need for focus is there. Uh, we got it, it, knowing that is one thing, but then making a, 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 a conscious choice to not allow that to take place is a whole other thing altogether. So all of us as the people of God have to make a purposeful decision, not just one time, but every single day to set our focus, our attention in the right place so we don't lose focus because this world is constantly there with that stool trying to draw your attention away. Amen. And so, so we, the, the struggles that we deal with as the people of God more often than not is because we're not focused as we ought to be, or we're looking to the wrong things for an answer. Instead of spending the time with the Lord in prayer, or spending time in our word along the way, or spending our time gathering together like this, we begin to focus on other things. We get caught up in this world, and we get caught up in the worries of the world. And, and in, as we do that, amen, we begin to be influenced by that. And when you meditate on God and you focus on God and you set your affections on God, you begin to be influenced by God. Do you believe that today? Amen. It always amazes me when you have these you have parents that will set their kids down in front of a, a particular uh, television show that, that they're, you know, they're talking about math because they believe that their kids are going to be influenced and, and learn from math. Which, which, that's good, reasonable thinking. Amen. We have to also understand those same kids, if they're influenced there, you also bring those same kids to church, and guess what? They're going to be influenced, right? And so, so, what we set our, so what we set our focus on, we're usually going to be influenced by. And so we, as people that influence, sometimes we get to looking at the world, or our focus is on the world, we begin to be influenced by the world. I mean, we begin to either think like the world thinks, or we're viewing things as the world views things. And God wants us to bring our focus back to what it ought to be. And He doesn't want us to view things as the world views things. He not only wants us to... Uh, it, it's, not, it's not some fantasy that we can have as we look to our God and say, I know that God is going to take care of us. It's a reality. This is who God is. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added. That's not a fantasy, church. That's a directive from the Father that says if you'll set out and this is your goal, if you'll put your focus in the right place, you say, all of these other things that you're fretting over, you don't have to worry over those things. And listen, I know i got some worry warts in this church. I'll amen for you. Some of you know who you are and I ain't got to call you out. You just spend all your time worrying. Worry, 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 worry. And I'm just telling you, that's not what God wants us to do. He wants you to focus, focus, focus. Amen? Not worry, worry, worry. So set your affections on Him. Why does He say that? Because He's got everything taken care of. He's, he's got this. And when you set your affection and you're chasing after Him, you're going after Him, you're one of His. One of His. See, we don't look through those sets of glasses sometimes. We forget. We still view ourselves as we used to view ourselves. And God says, listen, you've got another set of glasses. Now I want you to look at this world in a different perspective. I am your God. I am your Lord. Seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, everything. I am your God. I own the cattle on a thousand's hill. I know your needs. I know the desires of your heart. I know the number of hairs on the top of your head. I know you intimately, and I'm inviting you into a relationship to wash away all those old things, and I want you to put your focus in a new place. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good news. It's good news that we have a God that's that interested in our life. And so God wants us to not have an outlook on life that has been influenced by the world. He wants us to have an outlook on life that's been influenced by Him. Amen. I mean, and the way that I looked at the world when I was, was under the influence of the world was much different. But the way that I look at things now under the influence of God, under the influence of God, that's a whole other message right there. I like that. But under, under God's influence, amen, things are different. There's a different perspective. There's a different outlook. There's a different expectation because I have God in my life. I'm expecting things to be different because of God. Not because I'm anything. Not because our church is anything. But I have a different expectation as to what's going to take place because I know that God's involved. I mean, I know this is his church. This is His congregation. We are His people. Amen. I Meaning what we stand in need of, He is fully aware. And so whatever we stand in need of, I believe that He will be the provider of, that we as the body of Christ just need to be focused on the kingdom work of God. Amen. Oh, this gets me excited because it, it just reminds me. Amen. I know that if I want to get to Tennessee, I can go out and hop on 71. Not before long, I hit 75 and I'm going to get there eventually. It's good to know that I'm on the road that gets me to where I'm going. Amen. My desire, I have, I have a vision for what, I, what I'd like to see happen in my own life. I have a vision for what I'd like to see uh, what happens as a congregation, as a church. And I know that as long as we're on the right road, we're going to get there. Come on, church. It's not that we might get there. It's mean we're going to get there. I mean, and when, we, when we follow the prescribed path that God has laid out, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of saints of God be patient because you're on the path, amen, and me, your God, will provide everything that you stand in need of as long as you're focusing in the right direction, amen. I've already told you I will take care of you, amen. That's not maybe. That's not if. That's simply just how it is. It's good to know that. It's good to be under that kind of stability, Brother Jeff. It's good to stand on that rock that I know that God has said, this is how it's going to be, and I just know this is how it's going to be. I don't have to worry about that because I know that's exactly what God's going to do, and I have all of this history to look at. I have all of these experiences in my own life to take a look at. I can look all through the Bible and see where God was exactly that in all of these places. And never once was He anything less than what He said He would be. Never once was God less than what He said He would be. Never once. Never failed. Never let down. Never. That's a big word. I can't say that about most people that I know. Amen. But God never, never fails. Never lets down. And so that's, that's, that's a place to put your focus. That's, that's the place to anchor to. That's the place to, to take hold of because that, that is where you're going to have the purest of outlooks. Amen. 
Changing your outlook certainly requires changing your focus. I'll say that one more time. Changing your outlook 100% requires you and I to change, to change our focus. So let's start with remembering what he says. Listen, you've got to meditate on the word. You've got to read it first to be able to meditate on it. You've got to read it and meditate on it and then remember what he says. And then hold on to that. Amen. You want to get right, you want to change your outlook, change your focus. Focus on what he has said. Now, circumstances may not be, have not arrived to the place of what he has said as of yet. Amen. You ever been there? You ever been at the place where, where you know you're, so, you're looking at your circumstances and then you're looking at the promises and you're like, my circumstances and the promise, we're not on the same page yet. But guess what? You're on the, you're on the road south. You're going to hit Tennessee before long. Amen. You're on the pathway. You, you, you focus in the right direction. Listen, it won't be long that you're, before your circumstances line up with the promises. Amen. Oh, that's good stuff, church. Y'all way too quiet for me. Focus on what he says and keep it in front of you. Amen. Keep it in front of you. Some of y'all need to make some notes and pin it to your mirrors. Some of you guys need to have stuff that gets between you and the TV. Maybe you need to put a note on your TV. Some of us need to put a, a note on the refrigerator so before we go get that cheeseburger at 1.30 in the morning, amen, we, we, we got a reminder of what it is that God has said. We need to remind ourselves, and that's part of being focused is, is having those reminders, and the Holy Spirit will do just that, but He uses the Word of God along with that. We need to remind ourselves. And so when you're dealing with something in this life, when you're dealing with a circumstances, a, a trial, maybe you and your spouse aren't getting along, or, or maybe you're having financial issues, or maybe you're sick, or maybe you got a child that's unsaved and, and they're driving you absolutely nuts. Not that any of us ever deal with that stuff, amen, right? Maybe you're going through something. It's good to dig out the Scriptures and find out what does God say about that. What does He say? And remind yourself of that. And then view your situation through that Scripture, through the promises of God, and, and regain your focus. Just don't focus on your circumstance. Don't focus on the trial. Don't focus on the problem, but focus on your God. God's aware of your trial. He's aware of your circumstance. It hasn't passed Him by. Amen. Sometimes he's just looking at how are you going to deal with that? How are you going to respond to that? He's looking sometimes. You just look at Israel. We talked about these scriptures. You looked at Israel. I, I led you around the mountain for 40 years because I wanted to see whether you would continue to follow me. He's looking to see how they would respond. It wasn't just a circle around in the desert for no purpose. God had a purpose. God had a purpose. And sometimes our trials come with purpose. Amen. And we don't like to think that way, but sometimes they do. Not every trial is sin of God. Amen. Amen. A lot of people blaming God for trials that He didn't have no part of. Forget we got an enemy we're dealing with. Sometimes God allows us to continue through a trial, amen, that He didn't send in order that we can receive the good that He intended for us. Amen. God worketh all things to good for those that love Him. Do you believe that? See, there's another place that will charge, 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 I don't even know what I was getting ready to say. It was a weird something. Some new something I was getting ready to say. Sometimes, sometimes we, we realize real quickly uh, where we're at and what we're focused on uh, real quick is revealed in us when we go through a trial. We reveal, it reveals where our focus is. It reveals where our heart's at. So sometimes we, in order to change our circumstance, we've got to change our outlook. Amen. Some people stay in their rut because they keep looking to the rut. Amen. Some people stay in the ditch because that's where their focus is at, is in the ditch. Never look up to the road to get out of the ditch. They just keep looking at the ditch, keep talking about the ditch. That's where their meditation is at. I'm meditating upon the ditch. Amen. And God says, listen, set your focus in the right place. Quit meditating upon the these things, but meditate on these things. He says, meditate on these things. Why? Because God wants you to change your outlook. If you want to change your outlook, you've got to go to God. So how is it that we find true healing? See, we, we talk about physical healings, and we talk about things like that, but what I want you to realize today is 
there's, there's complete healing to be had, and there's healing to be had in us as people. Now, I've got new Christians in this room. I've got Christians that walk with God for a long time, and long time don't mean necessarily maturity. Can you agree with that? I mean, you could live for God for a long time and not have the spiritual maturity that you need to do, meaning if you've been following in the wrong path along the way or if not been doing what you ought to be doing as it ought to be, your years of service do not matter to God. It's all about where our heart's at. So if we're going to change, if we're going to change the outlook, we've got to change our focus. If we want to change, if we're going through the circumstance again, we can't focus on the circumstance. And God wants to heal the way that we look at things. Amen? We go to God a lot of times about our physical needs, and we ask for these physical healings. But I'm going to tell you there's a lot of mental healings as well that need to take place that are tied right along with some of those spiritual healings that we also need uh, healed from because uh, some of us have been through the ringer along the way and we've been through the trials and the circumstances and we're so accustomed to viewing the world in that way and we're so accustomed to that that when it comes to the place where God says focus I mean, we lack the sound of it and, and, and we agree with it. it's not even that we disagree but we've we've not received the healing to the place that we're able to draw we are still so focused on the stool we're still so focused on, the, on these trials that are coming our way. That's what we see. We're still, so there's a healing that God wants to give that will, that will cause you to quit focusing on that and set your focus on Him. There's a healing to be had for the church of the living God. And I want you to hear me today because the church of the living God needs to be healed uh, from looking at this world from the world's perspective. God says you're no longer in the world. You're no longer of the world. Amen? You're not of the world. You're of his kingdom. You're his child. And so he doesn't want you to view those things that way. Now, see, this becomes important because it's a, it's a many-fold, many-fold when we get into this because, because how we view it, where our focus is at, what our outlook is, is, is going to, to, to navigate its way right to the tip of your tongue, and you're going to talk about where you're at according to your focus and according to your outlook. If your focus is on the world and your focus is, uh, is looking at it from a worldly perspective, if, that's, if you're, it's just your focus on your circumstance, you're focused on your trial, if that's where you're at, that's what you're going to talk about, John. That's what we're going to hear. That's what people are going to hear. They're going to hear about your trial. They're going to hear about your circumstance. They're going to hear about all of those things. They're not going to hear about your God and how He is helping you to overcome all of those things. They're not going to hear about your God and how the fact that you're in this storm and yet you have peace. Amen? And that's what God wants you talking about. Not that we don't talk about that we have problems. Because you're, yeah, you're around me very long, you're going here. I don't, I don't, I won't hesitate to tell somebody, hey, I need you to help me pray. I'm going through some things. I just need you to help me to pray. But let's, that's, a, that's, a, that's enough. That's enough. You don't need to be my focus. I got things to do. There's messages to preach. There's people to talk to. There's lost and dying all around me. I could asphyxiate on the problems. I got a boy that's driving me nuts right now. He's up and down, roller coaster ride of living. And I was thinking, looking back at his age, I was almost as goofy as he was. You didn't hear me say almost, right? I could focus on that. I could let that be the tidal wave that just keeps me down on the floor. Amen. There's too many people in God's house laying on the floor because of the tidal waves of life have come in. And God says, listen, get up. Let me give you some healing in your mind. Amen. And I'm just going to tell you right now, the challenge that I give you before we even get any further in this message is, is not just what it's going to take place in the service this morning, but whatever you've been affixated on, whatever, whatever circumstance of life, whatever your worries are, all of those things, get your focus off that. I challenge you to put your focus on, on God. Set your, set your heart on Him. The time that you're spending worrying about these other things, take some time to pray during that time. Take some time to maybe open up your Bible and read a few scriptures and, and meditate on that. Take some time to call up somebody that you know is going through it. And you be the help to them that you're looking to, to, to have for yourself. You, 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 put, you put some seed into somebody else's life that, that maybe you need sown into yours. I'm going to tell you, God's really good about as we sow 
about pouring right back into us because I've not seen many people that are, I've not seen any people that are sowers that God don't, that God don't keep filling the bag to say, go ahead and sow some more. Amen. Amen. Do what you got to do. So if, if faith, if faith is a thing, is a substance of things hoped for, why are we focused on the things that we hope don't happen? There's a thought. If faith is the substance of the things hoped for, then why in the world are we so focused on what we hope doesn't happen? Amen. It's a lack of faith. We're not putting our confidence. We're putting our faith in the circumstance, in the trial, and its ability to overcome us or make our life hard. We put our faith in that. We believe that. That can happen. Look at the circumstance. This is going to be hard. Look at the circumstance. This is going to be, we're going to be dealing with this for a da 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 That's what we focus on. God said, listen, get your, get your eyes off that. Yes, yes, the circumstance is this. Yes, yes it is. But that's, don't, I don't want you to put your attention there. I want you to set your focus in the right place. And so, so faith, faith is a very real factor in what we're talking about. Amen. We want to reveal our faith. And I'm not just talking about your belief in Jesus Christ, but I'm talking about your belief in the Father and His ability to keep us as the people of God. The world needs to know about this church. The world needs to know. And, and I'm not telling you to focus on something that's going to let you down. I'm talking about focusing on something that's going to bring you right to where you need to be at. And so the world needs to see you focused. The world needs to hear about your outlook. The world needs to, to see it. But there, there's a healing that has got to take place within the body of Christ in order that we're speaking to those things and not just keep speaking to this world and all of the things that are going on around us. Amen. Yes, we recognize, but guess what? We have a very real God. Amen. They did some research on, on successful people. And, you know, they were looking, was it, you know, where they, you know, where they were brought up at. And they didn't find a common factor on where they came from. They did research if it was about, you know, a certain set of parents. And now that didn't, that didn't seem to have much to do with it either. They looked at schools they attended. That, didn't, that wasn't the focus. But when they sat down and they began to question them, it was about outlook. That, that, was, the, that was the differentiating factor, meaning they had all been through stuff. It all, some had been brought up as, you know, had a silver spoon in their mouth and there was other guys that, that, that had really just struggled through everything. There was all of these different factors, but the common factor across the board was how they viewed life and how they viewed their trials along the way. Meaning when there was failures, if they focused on the failure, then that, they were usually not successful people. The successful people were able to have failures and get past them. The successful people actually use their failures as a springboard into their success, meaning they look back at their failure, they learn from the failure, and then they move from that into success. How they spoke about life, they found over and over again, it was, it was about their outlook, it was about how they spoke about things. They didn't speak about their trials, they didn't speak about the past failures, they didn't speak about that, they spoke about their direction. All you got to do is listen to Elon Musk, he's telling you all the time about what he's going to do next. He's a very successful guy. And he's always got a vision for what's coming next. And that's what you hear him talking about. You don't hear him talking about the rocket blowing up on the platform. Amen. You know what he told his guy? This was, this was the difference between SpaceX and NASA. NASA refused to have any failures. And if they had a failure, they'd shut things down. Elon said, we're going to do it. We're going to have all the failures that we need until we get it right. And he didn't focus on the failure. And they didn't quit when they failed. They just kept pressing forward. And we've watched. We've all watched. I mean, he's an enigma in our land today. But he's got a focus that's much different. I wish he was a, a born-again believer. He could really do some work in the kingdom of God. Amen. But, but, but he's successful, and, and a measure of his success is all you've got to do is sit and listen to him. He's got an outlook, and he's got a vision uh, for what he's going to do. He's always looking to that. He's got these, these desires, and, and he's always looking to that. He's not looking to his failures. Amen. There's something to learn from that, church. There's something for us to gain from that along the way. Have your focus in the right place. Consistency in our outlook uh, makes, makes a big difference. So focus and outlook will definitely impact us. Do you believe that today? Are you with me up to that place? 
Focus and outlook will definitely impact, impact how we're acting. 1 John 1, 9 says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, what's important about this? Well, first off, this is the first thing that God does. He says, listen, I don't want you focusing on your past. I'm going to take your past and put it in the sea of forgiveness. Let's get rid of that. All of that sin you committed, you don't need to pay attention to that. Don't focus on that. That's who you were. I want you to focus on who you are, not who you were. He says, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your sin. I'm going to put it in the sea of forgiveness. That's done. Don't focus on the past. So he says, confess your sins. Begin there. Start with that point. If you're, if you're overcome in your mind because of your failures and the things that you've done, well, then you just get on your knees and you present them before God who has said, bring these things to my, to, to, to my altar and lay them down. And when you get up, you leave them laying there. Amen. And there's some people in this room that need to lay some things at the altar and don't pick it back up. Leave it there. And then when you get up, you put your focus where it ought to be at and you remember that the God of heaven, who cares what the world says? The God of heaven picked you up out of your pit. Amen. And the world's trying to remind you of who you was and what you did and all that. Well, go ahead, point it out. All you're doing is reminding me of who picked me up out of that ditch I was in. Amen. Go ahead and focus on that. Amen. I'm going to focus on something else. Amen. Confess your faults. Get past it. Get over it. Confession's good for the soul for a lot of different reasons because God doesn't want you focused on your failures. Amen. He wants you to focus on your new birth. Amen. On who you are. You're a blood-washed child of God. Remember that. Focus upon that. And put your outlook on life according to that. Amen. It's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And, 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 and. This is so good. And cleanse us from our unrighteousness. He forgives us of our sins and then he changes our character so we don't get up in the same mess again. Hallelujah. That's good news. That's good news. Amen. He didn't just leave me the way I was because if he did, I'd be right back in the same mess that I was. But instead, he cleansed me from my sin and my unrighteousness. Good Lord, that's good news. Amen. If you was like I was, <laughs> I was an idiot. I needed some cleansing from unrighteousness. Amen. Oh, some of y'all's idiots too. I know it. I've heard the stories. Amen. We was fo Listen, there's enough idiocy running around in this room. Amen. Us put together. It's a good thing we didn't know each other in sin. We'd have tore some stuff up along the way. Amen. Thank God that he forgave us for all of that foolishness. Amen. And as well cleaned us up in our unrighteousness. That's not who I am today. And I don't view the world the same way that I used to. It's a different outlook. Peter says this. He's telling us, let go of your past. Let go of your past. Here's 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves. There's, there's another big place, guys. Humility. Humble yourselves. Make yourself lesser than. Understand that God is to be exalted. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time that He might do what? That he might exalt you. He says, if you'll humble, humble yourself, submit yourself to the ways of God, to the Word of God, to the direction of God, humble yourself before, before Him. And he said, there's going to come a time it's going to happen. He said, you're heading south on 75. You're going to run right dead into Tennessee. It's going to happen. He says, if you'll humble yourself, humble yourself, He'll exalt you in due time. You ain't got to worry about lifting you up. You ain't got to worry about exalting you. You don't need nobody to exalt you. God says, if you'll humble yourself before me in due time, I will exalt you. If there's anybody going to exalt me, I want it to be God. Amen. If anybody's going to exalt me, that's where I want it to come from because that's going to be in its purest sense. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3.6 says this. It says there's a time to seek, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. Amen. And sometimes that's exactly what we need to do, church. Things that we're holding on to, we need to cast away. Ken, I need your help for a second. Do you mind stepping up here? I got this pie over here. 
just a little cup of water. I just need you. He just, just hold your arm straight out like this right here. There you go. All right. I'm not going to throw this on you, I promise. I just need you to hold that cup of water. Now, now, now church, if you was going to guess at how much this cup of water weighs, what, what would your guess be? It's about, I don't know, seven, eight ounces of water. If you was going to guess what that weighs, what, do you, what, do you, what would you think that it weighs? Well, you know, maybe some stuff going around in your head right now. Maybe, maybe a pound altogether, maybe. Close to it, maybe, maybe a pound. So, you know, asking Ken to hold this pound of water doesn't seem like too big of a deal. Amen. Now, we ain't got all afternoon to really test this theory out. But right now, that's not too hard, right? An hour from now. Two hours from now. This, the weight of this water is, is not really relative. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is the fact that he's carrying it. And carrying it now doesn't seem like too big of a deal, but if you keep holding on to it, an hour from now, this is going to become a problem. Two hours from now, it's going to get close to being unbearable. He might not even make it three hours from now. And it just started out with a little, a little glass of water. That's not too big of a deal. Church, we're doing the same thing with our little problems in this life. God says, lay it down. God says, don't let your anger go down. Uh, with, uh, don't let the sun go down on your anger. God says, listen, if you've got uh, tr trouble with your brother, He says, God, get that thing fixed. He says, if this thing is riding in your heart, He says, you've got to let it go. Because God understands that even those little problems, that when we're looking at it, we're like, well, what in the world is this bothering Sister Boehner so bad for? What you don't know is how long Sister Boehner has been carrying around that little load. That little load that you dismissed, that little load that you're like, why is that impacting her so bad? Why it's impacting her is because she's carrying a load that that she wasn't supposed to be carrying. Thank you, brother. I just resisted temptation, brother. I wanted to throw that on him so bad. Thank you, Jesus. I've been born again. Back in the day, I'd have just been like, hey, there's your pie, buddy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know he would have. Sometimes we're holding on to things, church. That God's telling us to let go of. And we're feeling the weight of that because we continue to hold it. Now God's given us, He's given us the out. He's telling us, and He's aware of this. And what happens with a lot of us is a lot of us are, are carrying not just, not just one thing, but we keep piling on. And we're carrying all of these little problems, and they're nothing big, and so we feel okay with carrying because it's not even big. It's not even sin. It's not even sin that we're holding on to. It's just circumstance and trial and problems, and we keep piling up, and a little cup turns into a pitcher, and it's all little stuff. It's all these little things that we discount, and we throw it out of our head because we, don't, we just don't think it really adds up to much, and yet we sit there, and we continue to try to hold it and hold it and hold it, and what didn't, what, what wasn't much at one point in time, the next little trouble that comes in seems to be the thing that just keeps us from being able to sustain any longer. And so we got the people of God growing weary because they're holding on to things that God never intended you to hold on to. Amen. Are you with me, church? But let's look back there at Ecclesiastes. A time to seek. There's a time. To seek a time to lose, a time to keep, and there's a time to put away the cup of water. James 4 7 says this Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee for you. Listen, God's given us a recipe. Here's another place that people, that people go on. The enemy brings in temptation, and here we are. We're right there. And God says this And if you resist the temptation, he says the enemy will flee from you. We got people that are just dabbling. They're there. They're focused. They're asphyxiated. The devil's sitting there with his four legs, and, you know, pointing at you, and we're just all over the place. We're watching him. We're, you know, God said, Get what? Quit. Resist. Resist. Resist even think on those things. Keep your head off it. And he tells us where to put our attention at. He says, if this is what you need to think on, these are the things that you should be thinking on. If you'll think on those things, amen. I'm going to tell you right now, the, the enemy is impatient. I mean, if he can't get you to, to bite on the hook, he's a 10-minute fisherman. If you ain't bit on that hook, 
and you resist to bite on that hook, what's he going to do? God said it. He will flee from you. But too often we're biting on the hook. Amen? And we, and, and, and we think that the enemy is just coming around with sinful stuff. No, 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 no. No, the enemy just wants you to lose focus. That's it. That's all he needs you to do. He just wants you to lose focus because he knows as a focused child of God in the army of God, you are a very impactful uh, person uh, within the kingdom of God because God is able to work in and through you and make big impacts in this world. But if he can get you focused somewhere else, amen, doesn't have to be sinful. Doesn't have to be sinful. It's just got to be out of focus. That's what he's looking for. So God says, listen, you guys got to pay attention. It's those little trials. It's those little problems. It's those little things that you've been throwing to the side, not counting up to be anything. You have to understand those things are affecting you. And the reason you feel so weighted down is because you're holding on to stuff I never intended you to hold on to. The reason it feels so weighty to you, the reason the enemy's bothering you so bad is because you're looking at the legs on the stool rather than the Father. Amen preaching to myself right now. I'm like, amen my own self, Kristen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good news, church. It's good news to have a reminder. Amen. As, as much as I hate for my GPS to holler at me for anything, like it'll tell me to make a U-turn, and it'll say it 75 times. I don't know why they programmed them that way. Make a U-turn it. Next time it's safe. Make a U-turn. Next time it's safe. Lady, I heard you. I ain't even seen a U-turn. If I make a U-turn, a little guy with all the accessories on his car is going to pull me over. But now if I get to go in the wrong direction, I'm thankful to hear that voice. Yo, you're going the wrong way. Well, that's good news. I'm glad to hear that. I can get turned around and get back on the right path. And this is what God's doing this morning. He's just, listen, just pay attention. It's, it's, I'm not chastising you. I'm just trying to get your... Focus back in the right direction. I want you to focus on me, not on the enemy. Instead of, instead of resisting, people are focusing. Amen. Amen. So change your outlook. Here's what God said. Jeremiah 29, 11. You're familiar with these. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Do you believe this today? Do you, rem- do you believe Jeremiah 29, 11? You need to just circle that. Underline it in your Bible. For I know the plans I have for you. That's what God says. I know my plans. I know. It's not this world that knows. It's not the enemy that knows. I know. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Amen. What I'm just saying. Church, did you hear that? The God of the universe, the creator of all things, the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the one that parted the Red Sea, the one that rose Lazarus from the grave, the one that sent Jesus Christ, amen? That God said, my plans are to prosper you. He's got the ability to do so. Do you believe that today? Amen? So a life of righteousness, a a, a life of holiness, a life in this walk with God, this spiritual walk, we can have this expectation. I know my thoughts toward you. They are good, declares the Lord. Plans. I have plans. Plans. My plans are to prosper you. Not to see your demise. Not to see you fail. But my plans are to prosper you. Yeah, but I, and the enemy told me. To, I'm not talking about the enemy. <laughs> Quit listening to that idiot. His, his, his finality is already taken care of. His end is already done. All he is right now is a chatterbox. That's it. No power. No authority. Just a chatterbox. God said, I know my plans. He don't know my plans. I know my plans. He said that it's going to be this, and I'm telling you I want to prosper you. That's what I want to do. Some of us need to just, we just need to bathe in that. You you just need to bathe in that truth. Hold on to it. Get a hold of it. God's got a plan for you, a plan to prosper you. Prosper you spiritually. Amen. Prosper you spiritually. With peace and contentment and joy. That's the plan of God. That's what He plans. He desires to you to be at peace. 
there to be calm, that there would be peace that surpasseth understanding that we go through the trials and the circumstances, yet we're in peace. And we can still have joy even though our heart's broken. We can still have joy and we can still be content even when things are messy around us and they will be messy and probably will always be messy in this life in some kind of way, but we can be content. Amen. I know my plans, he said. Oh, that's good news when you hear the Creator talk like that. Amen. I know my plans. I, I just almost imagine God with an attitude. Right? I know what I'm talking about. What's wrong with you people wrestling with me on this? Amen. Now quit listening to that idiot in the world and pay attention. He said, I plan to prosper you, not to harm you. That's not, what it, that's not my plans for you. It's my people. And he says, I plan to give you a hope and a future. Now you got to think about when God was saying this. Because the Messiah wasn't here yet. Now you just ponder this for a second. You think about when God said this, you have to understand the Messiah had yet to arrive. And God restored people back into fellowship with Him. God said, i got a plan. <laughs> I know my plans for you. That's not to take everybody out of the world. He said, my plan is to restore you. Now, he didn't say that here. He said, my plans are to prosper you. How do we prosper? God said, I came to give life, and not just life, but abundant life. I have plans to prosper you. Jesus showed up on the scene, and God began working that plan. It was being worked all over the place. Raising the dead up, the lame walking taking people that were just caught up with demonic presences that couldn't, that couldn't think straight. God delivered them out of those things. He said, I got plans for you. They're good. <laughs> I got good plans. And you can almost imagine God knows Jesus. He already knows I'm sending Jesus. I'm sending the Savior. I'm sending the Messiah. He already knew His plans and He spoke it. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And here we sit basking in the very thing that God said. And yet we still doubt. We've got the Messiah, and we still doubt. We've got the Messiah, and we're still focused on the, 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 the trials and the troubles and the problems and the circumstances, and here we are with the Messiah that has taken us out of this miry clay, put our feet upon the rock, has given us the hope of heaven and understanding who we are as the children of God. He has given us His Spirit that we can... Put our foot down on the neck of the enemy. Amen. That, that he has no ability, no weapon formed against you and I shall prosper because our God said, I got good plan for you. I got good plan for you. I'm not just doing a little something. You're about to prosper. Amen. And I'm not talking about the prosperity that some of these guys out there preaching. Not to say that God won't prosper you financially. God can. And that's not against that. But I'm not going to tell you it's going to happen. God told us, He said, the poor are always going to be amongst you. Amen. you got to have the poor. They, they cook the best beans and cornbread. That's a joke, guys. Some of y'all got took that a little too serious there. You look like I hurt your feelings over the beans and cornbread this morning. Amen. I grew up on that stuff. Amen. I'm getting close to a close. Philippians 4, 6 says, do, <coughs> Excuse me. Do not be anxious about anything. Now, now, if we had time, I'd just say we need to meditate on that right there just because there's some people in this room need to meditate on that. Do not be anxious about anything. Who's that for? Who is it? Somebody in here right now needs that. God said, do not be anxious about anything. The same one that said, I know my thoughts to you. They're good. I have plans for you. I plan to prosper you. He said, don't be anxious about any. It's the same God that said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything else will be taken care of. It's the same God that said, you are sons and daughters, kings and priests. The same God says, don't be anxious about anything. What is He saying? He says, I have got you covered. I've got you covered. You're under the wings of my grace. You're under the wings of my earth mercy. I, I'm providing for you. I'm going to take care of you. I have given you the Savior of the world. I put your feet upon the rock. You know, all of these things, I want you to look closely at what I've done. I took Israel and I took them all through all of these people along the way, armies trying to fight them. I took just as many as 300 men at one point in time, defeated great armies so I could deliver to you a Savior into this world so you could have a hope 
Amen? Why are you still focused on the little goofy guy with a stool? Amen? Don't be anxious. Resist that guy. Put your focus on me. Resist that guy. Put your focus on me. He says, don't be anxious about anything. Amen. Anything. But in every situation, every situation, every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request before God. God says, listen, I've given you the avenue. You've got a high priest now, earthly high priest. I've given you a high priest that's sitting on my right-hand side right now. I've given you a high priest that's not swayed by the things of this world. I've given you a high priest. I tore the veil. I tore the veil right there in the temple. And he said, I've given you access. You can come into that holy place because I've made you holy. You can come into the holies of holies and you can bring your petitions. And all you got to do is turn back to the back of the book and you can see where these vials are there before God and the prayers of the saints are right before God. The prayers of who? The saints. Who are we? The saints. The prayers of who? The saints. Who are we? The saints. He said, what do you want to do? Every situation, whatever it is you're going through, this is what you need to do. Don't be anxious. Instead, pray. The world can be anxious because they ain't got nobody to pray to. They, they're praying to, to Allah or Chubby 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 Checker or, 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 or Buddha. Or I don't know who they're praying to. Amen. Whoever they're praying to. Whatever they're praying to, I mean, we saw how it went with Baal, the prophets of Baal, and they cry all day long. No fire come out of heaven. The one we're praying to sent fire from heaven. Amen. The one we're praying to said, don't be anxious. I sent fire there, and if you need fire now, I'll send fire now. Don't be anxious in anything, but come in prayer. Bring your needs in prayer. In every situation, bring your petition and your thanksgiving. I like that because there's things to be thankful about. Just your petition. Thanksgiving's important because we need to remind ourselves. We'd be thankful. Why? Because God's already done this, 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 this. This, 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 this. I'm asking, I'm making a petition today, and I can trust that God is going to hear my petition because He's already answered this, 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 and this. And so the Thanksgiving is necessary. Prayer and Thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. Every time I say the word Thanksgiving, just turkey pops into my head. <laughs> Can't even say it right now. It's, it's just that time of year, right? Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper. I can leave that with you right there and we can move on to the next scripture. He says, confess your sins. If you're trying to conceal your sin, then you're not going to prosper. God says, I know my thoughts towards you, they're good, and He wants to do what? I will prosper you. But in order for us to be able to receive the good from God, we have to turn away, repent from the old way. The enemy with the stool, if you're, still, if you're still covering your sin, you're still focused on the stool. And I can promise you right now, when God says you will not prosper, there's a reason for that because the one you're focused on is not interested in you prospering. Amen. So he says, and you're trying to conceal your sin, you're still focused on this guy. You're still focused on the enemy. You're still focused on that. He said, you've got to get your focus off that. Amen. He said, it's the one, it's the one that confesses and renounces those things that find mercy. Uh, Psalm 46.10, i gotta, I got to hurry. He says, be still and know that I'm God. Amen, I love that. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I could spend a lot of time just preaching around that scripture, but it says what it says. God says sometimes we just need to just pause. And sometimes that being still, people think we, we ain't doing that. We're just hanging out and waiting. No, no. No, be still means, listen, we can operate in peace. We can operate in contentment. We can operate in these sureties of God's Word. Listen, we don't have to be anxious and we don't have to be stirred. We can, we can operate in the midst of all of that. And God says, listen, I will be exalted. You know, we look at all this mess in the world. Just read that scripture again. God said, I will be exalted. Hey, let them dabble. Let them keep sowing tares amongst the wheat. The time's coming. Don't worry about that. God said, don't worry, don't fret about that. What I'm worried about is this. I want you to set your affection. I want you to be focused. I want you to have peace. You are my people. And they're invited. They're invited. And I want you to invite them because I do love them. But don't worry about that. 
Don't worry about the troubles. Hebrews 12, let's get in the sock and close. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside. I want you to pay attention to this part of it. Go to the next slide, guys. Hebrews 12. Let us lay aside every, every weight. He's, that's what he says first. Let us lay aside every weight. Now look at the next scripture. And, and the sin which clings so closely. Now it's important to pause in that because he says we're surrounded. I mean, there's people looking at us and they're looking to see what we're going to do. We claim to be the church, so what's the church going to do? We claim to be the church, so how's the church going to act? There's a great cloud of witness. There are people that see the lives we're living. And then he says, this is what you've got to do. You've got to lay aside every weight, but then he separates it. Sitting there with that cup, Brady. We take these little problems in life and we hold on to these weights. And it's little weights. And so we, we, you know, we, we resist the idea of thinking we've got to set it down. God says, you've got to lay aside every, every, lay aside every weight, every weight, lay it all aside. And, and also lay aside the sin. It's not just the sin. See that? He's not just saying the sin. He says, you've got to lay away aside the weights. It's the things that are bogging you down. It's the things that have your affection in the wrong direction. It's the thing that has gathered your attention. It's the things that you're focused on. God says, listen, you've got to lay aside that stuff, Mike. You have to push that stuff to the side. You have to set your focus in the right place. He says, do all of that. And then he says, he said, these things that, that which cling so closely. And he knows it's the things that are a part of your life. He says, you've got you to push these things away. And he says, then, he said, and then let us run the race. And he says, with endurance. I mean, you know, you're sitting there with that cup and you're carrying this weight and you're carrying this load and that's where you're focused at and you're trying to run the race. You want to you serve in the kingdom of God, but all of these trials of life are weighing you down because you're holding on to them and you grow weary. You grow weary with the work of God. And it's not because the work of God is over cumbersome. It's because you're still holding on to stuff in the world that is keeping you from being able to run with the endurance that God intended. Amen. Amen. That makes me want to shout. Amen. Some of us have gotten weary. We get weary. Start talking about doing something to the church. People get weary. They get weary. I'm like, what in the world have you got in your cup? Set the cup down. You won't get so weary with God's work. Amen. Amen. God help us today. Amen. All right, we're going to close right there. I need to be praying for Belva. She's not feeling good today. Miss Belva when she's not here. I miss all of you when you're not here. Amen. You got your focus in the right place, church. Amen. Are you carrying around things like this, little things, weights that are bogging you down along the way? Are the circumstances of life what have your focus? Is the big problems in our world, is that what has your focus? Or are you focused on the creator of all of those things? Amen. Our outlook can make all the difference in the world. When you set your affection on Him, I know His thoughts toward me. When you set your affection on Him, I know His plans for me. His plans for you. Well, you can know that. I know His plans. They're plans not for harm, but to prosper. Amen. That's where I want my affection. That's where I want my attention. I don't care about all this other mess. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. I know what's on the way. I'm, I'm already, I'm already, listen, we need to just pause and every last one of us in this place need to recognize if you've been living for God, you're already living in some of the prosperity. Amen. I mean, I go to bed and I wake up in the morning, I draw breath and, I, and I've not got all of this stuff that I did the day before that I got all this huge regret for. That was my life in sin. There was times I didn't even want to get out of the bed because I, I didn't even want to face the idiot that I was yesterday. Amen. It's prosperity. There is a prosperity. There's, there's healing that is taking place in my life. The heal, healing of my spirit, healing of my attitude and my heart. There's healing in those things. Amen. God says He wants to heal you today. He wants to help you set the cut down, not focus on that. He says, well, I want you to focus on the work of my kingdom. That's what I want you to focus on. Put your focus there because that's going to be the most fruitful thing in your life. It'll be the most fruitful thing that you ever deal with. That's where prosperity is at. It's in this walk with the, with the king. It's in this walk with the father. He says, listen, the, the trials of this life, I know they're there. I know they're there and I'll walk with you through those things. 
And I will see you through to the end. And I'll give you the strength that you need. And I'll help you to overcome. I just don't want you to focus there. You focus on me, this other stuff is going to, it's going to work out. It'll work out. Do you believe that today, church? If you would, let's stand together. We're going to have a song of invitation. I invite you. I invite you to come lay your cup on the altar this morning. I come, I invite you to not necessarily lay your sins down, but just lay those weights down this morning. I invite you to, to, to lay away those anxieties that have kept you anxious in the world. Come lay that stuff down. Give it to God. Humble yourself before God and say, God, you know what? I've been carrying this mess around. It has hindered me. It's hindered my walk with you. It's hindered the person that I've been along the way. I don't want to focus on that. God, I'm sorry, amen, for being anxious when I shouldn't have been. God, I'm sorry that I've focused on my trial more than I've focused on my Lord, amen. Come take the time to pray because God says, listen, I, I know you're tired of carrying that load. He said, come take a hold of my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He, says, he tells us before that, he says, I don't want you to take on my yoke and carry your weight in this world. He says, listen, for this race, I need you to lay aside all of those weights. So for this race that you're in today, I want you to lay aside the weights and I want you to lay aside the trials. For, for this race, you've got to let go of those things. And some of us, we just need to do that. It's just simply just saying, you know what, God? I, I've been living for you for a long time. Some of us just need to, we just need to admit, God, I've been living for you, but I'm still carrying around stuff that I know I'm not supposed to be carrying. And I hear what you're saying, but I'm struggling with doing it. Listen, I'll be the first one in the room to admit those times when I've been more focused on my circumstance than I have been on my God. And it never plays out well when I do that. Come pray. Come pray. Go ahead. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life for a Father, Lord God, thank you, Father, for the interest you've taken in our lives, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for not just casting us to the side and forgetting about us in the way or giving up on us in our failures, Lord God, but thank you, Father, for how you have poured into us past tense, and thank you how you are pouring into us at this moment. God, there's been times when we've carried a weight, Lord God, that you didn't give us to carry. There's been times that we've held on to little things and we've been anxious, Lord God. And uh, Lord, along the way, we've looked to our circumstances and we've looked at this, uh, this world, uh, not looking at it as, as the children uh, that you've called us to be, but Lord God, looked at it as the people that we used to be, Lord God. Father, thank you, Lord, for your patience to, to strengthen us, Father, and to help us, Lord, this morning. God, there's people in this room that are setting their cups down. There are people this morning, God, laying those weights down. There are people this morning, Lord God, that, that Father, are casting those things away or turning away, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for, Lord God, there's healing that's taking place in our thought process this morning, God. We thank you, Father, for cleansing by the washing of the water of your word this morning. God, help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, as your people, Father, to walk in the abundance of grace and mercy that you've given us, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to apply the wisdom of your word to our hearts and lives, Lord God, Father, that we can go into this world, Lord, and exalt you, to lift up the name of Christ, Lord God. Not, Lord, just in word, but they could see it in deed, Lord God, that our countenances would speak of the Holy Spirit that is within us, Lord God. May you be exalted in our lives, Lord God, above our trials, above our circumstances, above our problems, Lord God. Father, may we be your people. Father, faithful, Lord God, 
Father, faithful to the degree, Father, that we prosper, Lord God, along the way, can help those around us as well. We love you. We thank you, Father God. We ask these things today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to have a seat real quick, and I want to ask real quick in the room if our veterans would please stand up. If you've served in the military in any kind of way, if our veterans would stand up. I know we got a few of you here this morning. We are very thankful for your service. Amen. If you give them a hand clap this morning. I think there's some slides. Like I said, the slides are on the screen. There's some of, we got a few pictures of some of the some of the guys this morning. Harold ain't always been ugly, has he? Amen. God bless. I think he had hair there, it looks like. Praise the Lord. Oh, Joe. 